Episode of Progress, Potential, and Possibilities, discussions with fascinating people designing a better tomorrow for all of us. I'm your host, Ira Pastor. Welcome, everybody, again to another episode of our show, bringing you another fascinating guest today uh, involved in creating a better tomorrow for all of us. Uh, today, we have the honor of being joined by Dr. Tobias Reichmuth, who is the founding partner at Maximon, which is a longevity company builder uh, focused on empowering entrepreneurs to build impactful science-based and scalable companies uh, focused on healthy aging and rejuvenation solutions. They recently announced the launch of their uh, new $100 million dollar uh, 100 million Swiss franc uh, longevity co-investment fund, which is looking to invest uh, up to uh, 10 million uh, francs per company, uh, potentially funding somewhere between 10 and 12 startups in this really fast growing industry over the next four years. Uh, he's also a founder of the uh, the extremely popular Longevity Investors Conference together with uh, Mark Berniger, another uh, of the founding partners there at Maximum. Uh, Dr. Reichman previously uh, founded the uh, the climate change infrastructure slash asset management company, Susie Partners. There he spent over a decade uh, specializing in infrastructure investments in the context of the energy transition uh, and invested uh, over a billion Swiss francs uh, in various companies in that domain. Uh, he is also the co-founder of very you know, other companies, in, including uh, Crypto AT Finance, the financial tech uh, holding company, uh, the Singularity Group, an asset manager, and a crypto finance conference, which he also initiated. Uh, he's also known for his participation as one of the lions in the uh, uh, the TV program, The Lion's Cave uh, in Switzerland, which is like Shark Tank here in, in the States. Uh, early on in his career, uh, he worked as a director for uh, International Foundation. Foundation, uh, has consulted for Fortune 500 companies, also worked as a strategy consultant in the Boston Consulting Group, uh, as a member of the German Economic Council, uh, did his PhD uh, at the European Business School, Osterklinkel Business Administration. Um, and we're honored to have him with us today because there's a lot of interesting things that he's involved in. So all that being said, Dr. Tobias Reichmann, thank you so much for taking time to come on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it, it's great to have you. Uh, I enjoy your bio in the sense, you know, you have this fascinating path from uh, consulting into climate change into crypto. Uh, when did you get bitten by the uh, the longevity bug, as we as we said? <laughs> uh, look, um, I mean, first of all, I'm always very enthusiastic about uh, new technologies and new topics, and I, I love to learn. Uh, so I'm, I think I'm an entrepreneur because I like to be challenged and I, I like to learn a lot when I'm building a new company. So that's why I I changed the industries, uh, you know, after 10 years or so, because, uh, you know, if you're working for 10 years in the field of uh, climate change infrastructure or renewables, I, I think with the time you get it, yeah, it's still a super important topic, um, but I, my learning curve was getting flatter and flatter. And so that's when I, I, I felt hungry to do something new. Now longevity, I heard about the first time uh, in 2016 when I was at Singularity University in Palo Alto, United States. And at that time I was I was fascinated, but on the other side, I was also not 100% sure if we talk science or science fiction. Uh, <laughs> and in 2020, uh, I stepped down from the CEO post at, at the Susie Partners, the infrastructure firm, and then the lockdown came. And suddenly I had maybe more time at hand that I was used to in the last 10, 15 years. Huh? And I, I used that time to research. And it was also very good that uh, because of the lockdown, you could get um, a phone call with pretty much anybody. Yeah? So it was no problem to calling up uh, over the great David Sinclair near Barcelona because 
they didn't travel uh, they didn't teach or at least only online yeah and so it was a good time to to dig into the sector and i, I found it absolutely fascinating the, the more i learned yeah and and i decided that's where i want to be active as an entrepreneur and you know when when you look at maximon as you set things up i mean you really um if, if you just look at it quickly I'm, i would think oh okay here's a, a venture capital fund focused on longevity uh biotechnologies what have you but you're really quite different in the sense that one uh you're much more focused on uh, building companies as opposed to you know just having folks come in and pitch you for money uh, so actively involved in the companies and on the other hand, you're not doing what a lot of folks are, are, are really heavily focused on nowadays, looking at sort of the only the big sort of longevity biotech moonshots. You're involved in consumer goods. You're involved in age tech. Uh, you're involved in sort of the area of uh, sort of the intermediary, say, but I say sort of the, the medical tourism opportunities, things of that nature. Talk about these two things. I think it's very refreshing in the sense that you're coming at this from a, uh, a much different perspective in the way you're looking not just to build but the way the types of companies you're looking to build i mean look first of all i i have to say we, we talk here about the biggest industry being established in the 21st century yeah? and when you when you look at this um, where we stand today, I think we are in longevity where we would be in internet in 1996, maybe even 1994, yeah? meaning that so many things still have to be done. And it's a good time to build platforms, meaning that you are doing this kind of shovel to a gold rush business as well. Yeah? Um, and on the other side, um, you have those long shots or moon shots, which are more the biotech uh, topics where you say, oh, we have a molecule. Can we bring this through all the stages of an FDA approval over whatever, 10 years and, and $200 million or so? And so when, when we started looking at Maximon at longevity, we said, well, this is an interesting industry because it is the time to build platforms. And we try to avoid this binary biotech risk. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't do biotech. It's just that we don't want to be the ones going really from zero to FDA approval or the process because that, that's a binary risk. Yeah? And when we when we decided that, when, when we said, okay, how can we look holistically at this whole topic, longevity or the market of longevity? And that's when we said, you know, what, what is needed here is the entrepreneurial background or let's say having made all the mistakes as an entrepreneur in previous companies, we can help now scientists building companies and entrepreneurs building companies in various areas of longevity. And that's why we chose a holistic approach and said, let's not only focus on the sub-segment, but let's help as entrepreneurs, everybody who has a scalable shovel to the gold rush topic in longevity, um, the topic tapped, or, or let's say the, the, the knowledge must anyway come from the research of the entrepreneur, and we, as as a incubator company builder, we can help building the companies. We can help avoiding maybe the common mistakes you would do as a first time entrepreneur, and so on. And that that's our approach. That we say the topic is great. Let's look at the low hanging fruits, the shovel to the gold rush topics, and and help entrepreneurs. And let's you know, let's talk about some of uh, of the portfolio just to sort of expand upon that because uh, in here, you know, you have um, I think one of your first investors is this company Avea, which is involved in supplements. You also have uh, another group that you're uh, you're building, uh, sort of in the cosmetic cosmeceutical space. And and again here, um, yeah, here you have the benefits in the sense that um, you're fast to market. Uh, obviously, you don't have all the the typicals you were just saying uh, FDA FDA issues that a that a drug would have. Um, and then there's something else that I I don't think gets mentioned as much when we talk about uh, the consumer products, and that's that uh, what you put into that product, unlike the drug side, where there's usually a single ingredient that does one thing. Um, in these products, you have the uh, potential to explore combinations, which is something you know. From the pharmaceutical industry, I've been in, you know, that that stuff doesn't happen for decades <laughs> after you develop drugs. Talk a little bit about this, because I think this is another, in addition to sort of the speed to market and the ability to generate revenue, you have the ability to um, get a little more sort of combinatorial with the way you look at what these things are doing, the science behind them. 
Well, now we talk about the you know the, the startup companies we build. Uh, one of them being Avea. Avea is our supplement company. Now. Avea chose not to go the FDA approval route, but to go the supplement route. Right? Yeah. Why that? Because a lot of things which are now clear that they work for longevity mm -hmm. um, can be sold via supplements. Yeah? Yeah. And combinations, as you mentioned, can be done via supplements. Now, the only, uh, let's say, how shall I say, not yeah, the the only disadvantage is you cannot make promises. So in your marketing speech, right. you cannot say, "Take this; it will do the following." Yeah, as you could if you would have a medicament. Here we only can say, well, take this, and it might help you, you know, slowing down aging. Mm -hmm. So you talk to a wider audience, yet you must assume that the audience is more informed, or you must help the audience getting more informed. Versus, you have a medicament where the doctor prescribes it and it does what it should do. Yeah? So it, it's a different pair of shoes now. We believe that, or let's say it's a bit of the mission of Avea uh, here to help people slow down aging uh, in certain parts, rejuvenation, and we don't want to keep them 10 years away until you got the FDA approval. Right. Yeah. On the other side, you also must reduce risk because, you know, we deal here with potent agents. Sure. And you cannot just say, hey, you know what, try it, good luck. Yeah. yeah. So. One sector we are very much looking at right now is personalized medicine or personalized supplement KSI supplements. Yeah, because what I see and that that's a risk is that there is a lot of people teaching themselves by joining a forum, be it on Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever, and they come to the conclusion, you know what, I will take uh, one thousand milligram um, of uh, NM and I take uh, rapamycin and I take a metformin and I do the following. You know, I read a book, I discussed it. Well, that is dangerous, sir. Mm -hmm. um, we work, and, and in our team, we have uh, health practitioners and, and, and doctors, and this is needed. Yeah? So what, what we try to tell people is, hey, don't go with the highest dosage in, start slow, um, and, and, and consult uh, an expert, consult your doctor before you do anything. Yeah? I mean, it depends, of course, if you want to do more sport, go and do more sport, yeah? But if, if you talk about uh, the supplements you take, and we don't only talk vitamin C, right. then you, you, you really uh, must educate yourself and, and talk with experts about. And what we now come up with is, is, is like, you know, with, um, and also with Biolitica, that's, that's the second bi um, portfolio company we built. Uh, we help people based on their DNA, uh, their blood, uh, you know, also their actual age, gender, and so on. To choose the right supplement, uh, supplements and, and, and really have it personalized. Yeah? So there is way to go still. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, as you said at the beginning, I mean, uh, yes, uh, that the supplement or also cosmetics route help you to, compi uh, to combine the, the right ingredients and to make them available much faster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Biolitica there because I think the, again, the personalization connection. The ability to have apps and, and, and sort of all these wearables and, and being connected. Uh, I, I think that's a sort of a, a fascinating marriage there that, again, you know, is great that you're taking advantage of it uh, in the short term. And, and you know, we're not looking decades out for this. So that's that's great. Um, another, you know, really interesting. I've heard you talk about this and I saw it, you know, on your website, uh, Tobias, is, is this um principle of of senior co-living uh pro, you know this project that you're getting involved in and i have to say you know um age tech uh or just sort of you know this broad space of ultimately how uh we innovate and we think about longevity and we want to sort of get health span and, and keep stay younger but we we have to remember, you know, here in the United States, we have around 125 million people that are 65 plus. They represent uh, around nine trillion dollars of disposable income. So we need to focus on them, too. Uh, and I found it very refreshing that you are also taking sort of, you know, this age tech approach with something like the senior co-living that, uh, yes, we have a lot of active uh, seniors nowadays. They want products, services technologies yeah. now as well. Uh, talk a little bit about what senior co-living is all about, if you will. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you named it almost all already. It's the fastest growing uh, age group we have, you know, the, the 60 to 80 year old, you could say, or 55 plus. Um, and, and those people, 
they don't follow the curriculum originally thought for them. Uh, in 50 years ago, the curriculum was you're pensioned with 65 and you die when you're 68 or 70. Uh, and maybe you're half a year sick in between and you're gone. Today, your pension may be even earlier with 60 and you have another 20 years of healthy life in front of you. Yeah, And our society is not really prepared to accommodate for that. And, and when I, when, what I talk here is it's not about the medica uh, medicaments or anything. It's about social integration. It's about having a purpose in life. And there is plenty of studies showing that people who are socially integrated, who know why they get up in the morning, who have friends, they live healthier, happier, and longer. Yeah? So the, the effect on longevity or the extension of health span is very clear. And what we look at here is that we say there is a longevity promotion side and the longevity consumption side. Longevity promotion is take the right supplements, the right interventions, do sport, and so on. Yeah. Um, the consumption side is, okay, once you reach seniority and you're active and healthy, how do you fill your life with something? Yeah. Uh, and this cannot only be cruise ships because you cannot live the next 20 years <laughs> on a cruise ship. Yeah? And so what we looked at is uh, in Europe, especially now, a lot of people when they are 60 get lonely because yeah. you know they're out of the daily routine with a job. Um, the children are out of the house. Grandchildren might not yet be there or they don't visit as often as they might want uh, them to visit. Yeah? And you live in a big house in the green in the countryside. And your neighbors maybe not be the most active or so. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so why can we not bring those active seniors into a community with others where they can do anything from going to a concert, doing yoga together, having a cooking class, having a, you know, discussion evening, book circle, whatever it is. Yeah? Um, they still want privacy. They don't want to go back to a student community. Yeah. yeah. They want privacy. They, they want like, you know, a nice surrounding, but maybe they don't need 300 square meters anymore. Right. Maybe 60 or 80 square meters is enough. And then access to large common rooms. Yeah. A bit like a five-star hotel lobby or so. And most importantly, a concierge, which helps you being active, you know, which mm -hmm. tells you, Hey, tomorrow, remember at eight, we have yoga class. And would you like to join some others on the sushi cooking class in the afternoon? Yeah. And then our idea was basically we say, you know what, let's look at Soho House. Soho House, you might know, it's an international, basically, chain yeah. of, of cool hotels, restaurants for the uh, creative community. Yeah? Yeah. And it's cool to be a member there. You know, you have to apply. It's not that you just go there. Yeah? But it's, it's kind of, wow, I'm a member of Soho House. And so what we said is, we don't want to build sick care. We want to build Soho House for seniors. We want to have an offer for people who say, hey, I'm not ready to die and I'm definitely not ready to go for a house of all people or home of all people. I want to be active. Uh, I have something to do. I join, you know, the, the uh, Soho Senior House, so to say. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what we are building. Uh, so it, it's a membership-based new home for active seniors um, where you have with your membership access to a global um, uh, basically offer of, of cool real estate where you meet like-minded people, where you have a lot of activities. Um, and, you know, the activities, it's not that we need to offer them. It's rather that we have to curate. Because a lot of these seniors have own ideas of what they want to do. And mm -hmm. they, they just need to find a, a kind of a support system to say, hey, oh, you, you would like to go fishing? Well, let us find out who, who else would like to join you on fishing. Yeah, Let us help you organize that. Yeah, And so that will be our job there. Standing. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Longevity Lounge, if you would, because I think this is another sort of forgotten space in the sense, you know, we were just talking, okay, that's the age tech and you, you, that that uh, is an amazing opportunity that you just mentioned of what uh, this, this elderly population wants today. Um, there's something else that people want today. They want the the therapies that may already be approved or that have been ex in existence, but are just not practiced. <laughs> um, and, and in this case, whether it's parabiosis or uh, vitamin infusions, whatever. Um, and you're looking at creating some really interesting model. I mean, sort of almost like a Starbucks of uh, rejuvenation <laughs> today, uh, starting in Germany and Switzerland, but you also seem to be uh, looking at the Middle East. Um, and, uh, you know, as once again, like, you know, I'm sitting here in the U.S., um, there's a lot of other countries that are making healthy aging, rejuvenation 
economies, you know, really a core part of things. This seems like it plugs in very nicely to that. Talk a little about Longevity Lounge, if you would. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, we call it Live Lounge, uh, L-I-V Lounge. So we update the name a bit. Okay. Um, so this is this classic platform business I meant at the beginning of, of, of our discussion there. Because more and more longevity treatments will be available. But how do you administer them? Yeah. Uh, where do you go? And so what we think it's it's the, the right time now to open a chain of high street walk-in clinics mm -hmm. yeah, where you say, hey, I have two hours over lunch or two hours towards the evening where I want to do something good for myself. Yeah? And it's not a fitness studio. It, it's really a medical lounge yeah, where you get treatments which help you achieving a better longevity, extending your health span, feeling better, getting the max out of, you know, your performance. So our target group is basically threefold. It's people who, you know, early on want to prepare themselves for healthy aging. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second group is high performers who say, hey, I need to be fit. I, I, I need to be, you know, sharp. Um, uh, what can I do when I sit maybe 10 hours in an office or meetings a day? in order to be sure that I really get the most out of it, uh, be healthy and performing. And the third group is really people who are getting to seniority and say, hey, how can I slow down aging a bit? Yeah. And everybody of those um, can basically walk in. Uh, we have, again, two routes here. One route is you walk in and you do a DNA test with us. And based on that, we personalize you know, the interventions we suggest and say, okay, you know what, based on where you stand, you should come back once a week. We do, you know, cryo chamber, infrared sauna, uh, hyperbaric chamber, and uh, let's look at the following supplements. Yeah. Yep. And we do age measurements. So we, we do an epigenetic age clock test at the beginning. We can repeat this all three weeks, uh, all three months. Yeah. And then there is another group of people who may be more the life hackers who say, oh, I know exactly what I want. I come in because I want to do the uh hot and cold bath and i want to do the hyperbaric chamber and no i don't need a dna test i know exactly where i stand yeah? but we cater more to the first group we, we, we basically want to bring longevity to the masses yeah? and not how shall i say not 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 longevity in terms of like oh you know what uh cryo chamber great for you but really science-based yeah, yeah. So we have a doctor present as well. We, we also can do IV drops and so on. Yeah? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And again, the idea is to, to make it available. You know, so that this walk-in character is super important because, yes, there is longevity clinics where you can check in for a week and it costs you, you know, ten to $40,000 and, and they are great, yeah? but not everybody can afford that. Yeah? Right. But many more people could afford, let's say, 100 bucks a week. Still a lot of money. But uh, you have a wider audience, and, and that's the audience we cater to with with uh, Live Lounge. Yeah, outstanding. And um, again, maybe maybe to mention, I mean, with this we offer the platform for all other companies out in the longevity space. So yeah. if you have a new supplement, if if you have a a new treatment, maybe even a new machine, yeah, and they say, hey, this is relevant for longevity. Look here, that's the scientific proof behind. Um, then we are more than happy to look at it and say, oh, if we can integrate it uh, in, in our product range, very happy to take it on. So that's the platform character there. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's a, no, that's an excellent model. I, that's uh, I see per perpetuating in that context because there's just so much, you know, that ultimately be fed into uh, that structure. So now that's that's really refreshing to see that. Um, you know, talking about, as you were saying, sort of the, the medical sort of scientific expertise, you know, you put together this uh, advisory board, um, several of these folks I've, <laughs> I've done shows with. So you have folks like Brian Kennedy, uh, from down in Singapore and they have their new, uh, clinic down there. That's, uh, that's going live, uh, Evelyn Bischoff and, you know, been very active and sort of teaching sort of the next generation of, uh, of clinicians that may not know about longevity yet, but sort of getting them ready. And then you got folks like, uh, Colin Ewald, who's really working as sort of the other end, you know, on the cutting edge of the extracellular matrix by biology, uh, maybe stuff that's not right today, but moonshot type 
thinking uh, yeah. for the future. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the, the group, uh, how you assembled it, and a little bit of, I, I can imagine sort of the, <laughs> the scientific advisory meetings are, are exciting <laughs> with all these different perspectives coming together. They are super exciting, yeah? yeah. I mean, again, I'm not a biologist. So for, for me, everything is exciting in, in, in here, yeah? but it was very clear to us that if we want to build a, you know, a company builder incubator in the field of longevity, we need to have a very strong scientific support. Yeah? And that's when we said, you know, before we do anything, let, let's let's install a scientific advisory board um, uh, with Aubrey, uh, Colin, Eva, uh, Brian, uh, and others, yeah? uh, because we said we must be able to a know what is happening. So it's like put, putting your ear on the ground. What is the next big thing, you know? And uh, and of course, you know, with, with these people, we already have a global representation. We know what is happening in the United States at universities. We know what is happening at Shanghai or you know, Weizmann Institute in Tel Aviv. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and with this, we also have access then to very good, you know, postdocs and, and PhDs who might want to build a company. On the other side is we must challenge all the business ideas brought to us. Yeah? And to be honest, to me being more the entrepreneur and business guy, a lot of things sound super promising. Yeah. Uh, and, and then uh, we basically uh, run it by our advisory board. And very often then I'm, I'm a bit less enthusiastic afterwards. Uh? <laughs> so yes, advice, that's a great idea. It's very early on. Um, expect at least 10 years before this can go to market. Yeah? And, and in, in the call I had with the researchers, it sounded like tomorrow we can start. Yeah? Yeah. So so from, from that perspective, it's a, a bit of an insurance for us as well. Uh, sure. To be really working on things that work yeah um it, it's a bit of a, a how shall i say a net we throw out to the community to be sure that we get the best researchers talking about us and hopefully with us as well when they want to build a company um yeah and it, it's also a bit both ways you know I, I think also for the members of the advisory board it's interesting to have that body to speak to each other and it's interesting to them to see a bit from the business side how do we tackle things? Yeah, um, and in, in some cases, you know, it, it's really uh, coming out directly of research. And we say, let's do a product. So uh, mm -hmm. Colin Abel, who is in our advisory board, he was doing some, uh, you know, he had some breakthrough uh, success uh, with with collagen research. So he basically, yeah. after seven or eight years of research, was able to define a, a collagen precursor, which really has a high bioavailability. You know, triggers the production of collagen in your cells instead of the big molecule which is having a hard time entering a cell yeah. um and so we said you know what this is great uh let, let's use this let, let's do a product out of that with avea and so we do uh, and it's coming to the market more or less as we speak so we we have now a collagen precursor um which was built together with with, with colin um mm -hmm. that's exactly what what we aim for what um i i, I saw i think it was about a year maybe a year and a half ago or so, uh, it was an article, I think you were in it, and it mentioned a member of the Swiss parliament. And, and the concept of it was similar to, I guess, uh, a crypto uh, center, a crypto valley in Switzerland. You know, there was the proposal for this longevity uh, valley uh, with more political backing from the Swiss government uh, and the economic ministries and so forth. Did, did that happen? What, what's the status of that? I, I found that quite... Uh, especially in sort of where we yeah. are nowadays and certain, as I mentioned, I've, I've had guests on from some other countries uh, that, you know, again, healthy aging is, is not just a, a business, but making a part of the economy. Um, anything interesting moving on that front in Switzerland? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, Crypto Valley was something established 2016, 17, and it happened because a lot of cryptocurrency companies, you know, and, and blockchain companies, came to Switzerland, uh, especially to Zug. Zug was very welcoming, yeah? And Switzerland very early on had a, a crypto law in place and so on. So and uh, I had the yeah the honor of being part of that building crypto finance group, which we sold to Deutsche Börse uh, more than a year ago. Yeah. So I, I was like uh, also part of this ecosystem being built. And, yeah. and when we entered the, the longevity topic, I thought, well, you know what? Crypto was coming here more or less by chance, yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, and because Zug is an innovative city. Right. Now, longevity in Switzerland, that makes a lot of sense because we have uh, two of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world, Novartis and Roche. Uh, yep. 
Um, we have universities which are excellent when it comes to biotech. Uh, um, we have a lot of biotech companies being in and around Zug as well. Uh, and so why not having a longevity value in, in Zug? It would make sense. You know, you have access to talent, you have access to capital, um, you have a relatively liberal, uh, uh, you know, law surrounding and so on. And that's when I said, you know, next after crypto value, we, we might want to do longevity value. Yeah? Now you ask, is it established? Well, you know, this is not something which is done like this. I mean, it, it, it's a process. Yeah? yeah. The more companies coming, uh, the more you build an ecosystem and suddenly you have the critical mass and everybody comes. Yeah? We are not yet there. No. Okay. No, it just uh, it, it struck me as quite interesting when I read about it. So I, I thought I'd uh, I'd bring it up, but uh, no, that's great. Um, Tobias, you know, you just mentioned obviously in Switzerland you have Novartis and Roche. I sit here on the the U.S. East Coast, and then we have you know Glaxo, Mark J and J, and so forth. Um, pharma is you know it's not just pharma anymore, right? I mean, it used to just be pharma, and now. Uh, these pharma companies are, you know, combinations of consumer packaged goods, and some are involved in foods, and, and I, I can think of, and then uh, the drugs that the drug companies are developing don't look like the drugs of yesterday. If you look at microbiome products and, oh, yeah. and, and the consumer packaged goods companies, they're developing things that look a lot like drugs, and in between. Um, if you had a crystal ball, which I don't, uh, maybe you have one, I, I don't have one, but looking out, what, what do you think that this ultimately looks like uh, 10 15 years down the road is it is it a pharma company that you, or a set of pharma companies you think is going to be standing uh, when longevity bio matures you think it's going to be consumer packaged good companies or something different uh, that we might not expect well when when you look a bit of the history most startup companies at one point sell to sure. a bigger strategic buyer right. uh, and that might be then a big pharma but at the same time, there is also companies which basically make it through and become big themselves. Yeah. Yeah? So, you know, Google was not sold to Microsoft. Yeah? They, right. they decided that they grow themselves. And so I would say, since this is a very new industry in an extremely fast growing market, there will be some companies which become really large and stay independent because they, they, they never feel the wish to sell or they might even think if we sell, we might be slowed down. You know, joining a big company if you're a speedboat, uh, yeah, they, they will slow you down. They must. Uh, they have compliance and risk and whatever. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a league, you are probably not yet playing. So I would I would say there will be some new heavyweight players we haven't even heard about of today. Yeah. This, this is early again. Yeah? So it's definitely still time to enter the longevity market. This, this has not been done it's not that the market has been split up and, and distributed it's like there is huge pieces of cake you still can get um what will we see in the future well i think we will see a shift away from treating sicknesses into uh, towards prevention and that's something also big pharma will have to move uh, i mean if, if we are successful on the longevity side cancer becomes far less of a problem and I'm not talking about healing cancer. I'm talking about if you don't even get old enough to develop cancer, well, you don't need to heal it. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, not today. Uh, that's maybe 10, 15 years where we see changes happening. Yeah. Yeah. Tobias, you uh, you recently um, held the 2022 um, Longevity Investors Conference, which was extremely popular, uh, You know, record amounts of different folks showing up uh, you have something coming up in 2023 i think in davos in in march i think it might be january Just, in january actually. oh january okay okay talk, talk a little bit about sort of uh how you've in since 2020 how you've seen uh, the lic evolve um any interesting yeah. stories in terms again of you know you got all sorts showing up uh you know and, and interesting conversations fights uh <laughs> yeah. there's always a very contentious area but talk a little bit about uh, the last couple of years as you've seen this part of your uh, uh the process evolve yeah look i mean uh, lic longevity investors conference will remain our flagship event and this will be held in start again in september 2023 um, but we do the, the World Economic Forum event for the second time now, and, and that's a lunch. It's a lunch on. Yeah. Um, why do we do that? 
because the World Economic Forum brings together extremely relevant people from all around the world in one week, very condensed. Yeah. Yeah? We have movers and shakers there. Um, and, and what we have seen last year is the longevity topic is attractive. And so we had far more people who wanted to join our lunch than I think the 60 people we could let in the room. Mm. Um, this, this will be extremely exclusive. You know, you have to apply and explain why and so on. Um, yet we will also always keep 15 places free for spontaneous people, you know, and those people might be CEOs of, uh, you know, global companies. It might be politicians and so on. Yep. Um, it's extremely interesting who you can meet there. And I think why is it relevant? Because you can speed up things, you know, yep. shortcuts. Uh, if you meet the health minister of a country, and that's absolutely what you do in, in Davos, yeah, this might speed up certain things for the companies we have. Yeah? Um, it might be that we find a, a partner for distribution in the United States because you know the CEO of Walgreens is there just talking now and like not knowing whether these people are coming. But so that that's why we, we are there with the Longevity uh, Investors Conference and we do the Longevity Lunch there uh, in, in the high security zone, Hotel Seehof. So only you can only go there with a batch of, of, of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. and, and we believe, you know, it, Longevity now is maturing. It, it, it's time that we are there. Yeah? It, it, we should not be at the a sideshow, but we should be on main stage. And, and uh, that, that's exactly what we push for. Excellent. Really excellent. Uh, Tobias, before I, uh, I wrap up, anything else that we should know about as we head into 2023 uh, in terms of either Maximon or you or other conferences? Anything yeah, I missed? I mean Look, we are, A, very happy to cooperate with anybody else in that field. So we do not think about competition. We rather think about building ecosystem. Yep. And so, you know, by all means, if you have a longevity company out there and you think that we might want to do something together, hey, super, super happy to listen. Um, same goes for anybody who has a great idea in the field of longevity, wants to build a business or, you know, researchers who say, hey, we, we have found a new way, uh, whatever, repurposing drugs or so, talk to us. Uh, we, we really are interested in building companies which which make an impact, which have an impact in, in longevity here. And yeah, look, uh, I'm for me, it's exciting to be in, in, in that market and I'm, I'm hoping that many more will join. Because once again, I mean, the logic is an easy one. Everybody out there will be a client, uh, yeah. customer, uh, because nobody wants to be old and sick if you can age healthy. And that, that's what we work on. So that's why I think, you know, it's it's, it's the most interesting industry. We are early. Um, uh, it's great that, you know, you have a podcast like that because we need to spread the word, so to say. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. No, it's um, it, it's a fascinating model. I, I really, as I said, it, it, your, your portfolio uh, and approach is quite refreshing. Uh, compared to a lot of things that I've, I've seen. So I, I wish you the best with it as, as you continue to move forward and build these companies. Um, for everybody that's going to be listening to this episode uh, of the show across the various podcast networks or watching on the YouTube channel, again, you've been listening to Dr. Tobias Reichmuth, founding partner at Maximon, the longevity company builder. Also check out the uh, Longevity Investors Conference uh, and what's happening uh, in 2023 in January in Davos. Um, Tobias, I want to take time. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come talk to us a little bit about what you're doing. Obviously, thank you for doing it. And as we say on our show here, thanks for helping to create a better tomorrow via what you're championing there. It's really a great story. Well, thank you, Ira. My pleasure.